Good afternoon and welcome to the next session. Um, and this one is about uh, cloud computing. Um, and unlike perhaps some of the other presentations on cloud computing, I will discuss it a little bit more in a um, holistic approach and looking at it from um, um, a strategic sort of area rather than from a uh, technology point of view. Um, also, just before I start, if you um, are interested, we publish a uh, free newsletter every week, send it out on Tuesday, and Julie can scan your badge and then you, can, um, uh, you will receive that, um, uh, that free of charge from us. You see some QR codes that are um, uh, providing information to our um, website, our um, web app, and to our um, uh, Android application. And um, that uh, also gives you access, free access to the presentations, today's presentation, and to um, further information on the various um, on the various um, uh, uh, topics that we are discussing here at uh, CBIT. So if we. Um, So if, yeah, my voice is starting to un be unable to compete with, uh, with the others. So, so what we um, see with um, um, cloud computing is that um, it's already here, you know, and you and I are already using it, yeah? Uh, it's uh, Facebook, it's Google. Uh, it's Amazon, you know, a lot of these, what we call the digital media companies, are already using it uh, in quite a significant way. I mean, literally more than a billion people are now using uh, cloud computing already. But that's very much in, in this specific uh, area of the digital media. It hasn't really gone much further uh, beyond that, and that is because some of the problems that are, um, we are facing with um, cloud computing. <coughs> cloud computing, of course, is um, uh, ideally suited for the so-called over-the-top applications that are available on, uh, uh, on the internet. So where you actually, if you go to Skype, you can, you can uh, make telephone calls and video calls, but you're not using the traditional telecommunications network that is organized through a, a large number of uh, computer devices, servers around the world that are actually doing that, um, that work for you. And to give you an idea, you know, companies such as Google and Facebook and Microsoft all together have millions of these servers in data centers around the world, millions of them, yeah? So they are basically another telco level on top of the telco, yeah? So that infrastructure is facilitating all of these new applications that uh, we are now increasingly uh, using. Um, mobile cloud computing, of course, is another sort of area, and particularly if you look at the Android, uh, where you can actually bypass the app stores, you have your own web apps, etc., that you can develop uh, uh, all, once again, independent from the mobile, in this particular situation, from the mobile uh, operators. So, uh, what you also see happening is that customers are increasingly being a customer of the call it cloud provider, the company that, that has the contact with us, which is the Facebook, the Amazon, etc. So less, fewer services are actually used by customers directly from the mobile operator or the, or the fixed operator or the internet service provider, but are used on top of that. A good example, of course, is Facebook, where the majority of uh, young people, let's say between 10 and 20 years, are no longer using SMS, in any case in a very limited way, uh, and are no longer using email. They use Facebook mail and they use WhatsApps if they want to send applications. So they're bypassing in Australia the $2 billion SMS industry that basically is collapsing you know, while we, uh, while we uh, speak. So you really see this, um, uh, this development happening what, um, uh, what over-the-top applications linked to this cloud computing, what that's doing to the total industry. It's bypassing the uh, existing operators 
and it's actually putting other the other infra the other cloud computing companies actually in front of the retail provider to such an extent that last week Telstra announced that it's going to um, allow the um, uh, the recharging of prepaid mobile cars to be happen on Facebook. So here they're not using a, a Telstra big pond or whatever, they're using Facebook because they can't compete. Big, big pond cannot compete with Facebook. There are far more kids using Facebook than they are using big pond. So you know you have to make a decision, am I going to fight them or am I going to be am I going to join them? So what you increasingly see happening, or what I expect you increasingly see happening is that operators are going to be joining the over-the-top applications. The fact that Telstra is still one of the first telcos to do that in the world shows you how reluctant telcos are in actually using the over-the-top services because it basically means uh, a cannibalization of your own services, your own SMS, your own email, your own you know, internet services, big pond services, etc. So it's really an, uh, a matter of time uh, for the telecommunications industry to actually start making a choice you know are they going to basically disappear and become nothing less than um, than pipe operators or are they going to join the over the top and cannibalize their own services but start moving into the new direction where the future of that is and by the way okay for uh, recharging your mobile you don't necessarily uh, want to talk to people in Ecuador or people in Nigeria or people in China, but obviously at the same time, if you start becoming involved in utilizing over-the-top service, you can start looking at what opportunities are there beyond Australia, what else you can offer. Yeah? Apple most likely is going to offer on its one, one of its next uh, iPhones, iPhone 6 most likely, a possibility where you have an option to start choosing your mobile operator yourself as an over-the-top service. So, you know, you can say, you know, who has the cheapest, uh, the cheapest uh, call? You know, I want to make a call to, let's say, to my mom in the Netherlands. Uh, and I can quickly have a look, you know, I think I'm going to talk for 10 or 50 minutes. Uh, who has the cheapest call? Yeah. And I can actually then, at that point in time, uh, check which one I want to use to make that mobile call. Obviously, I can go to Skype as well. But, you know, you can have a quality difference in that situation. So if you start seeing that more and more of the power is taken away, from the mobile operators to the telcos in general and it's going to be put on, to, on the top, yeah, over the top. And that's where the cloud computing, of course, is, uh, is operating and where, that, um, where that's happening. I want to contrast this where, where cloud computing is not yet happening. Everybody is talking about it. Every big enterprise is trying cloud computing, yeah, but they uh, are shying away for a number of reasons to actually start also offering their services. Of course, there is a massive financial uh, savings if they move away from their desktop-based applications or their, um, uh, their in-house-based applications and they start putting these applications in the, in the cloud. Yeah? I mean, the massive, massive savings in maintenance of applications, uh, but also in the hardware needed uh, within the organization to run all of these applications. However, in the case of enterprises and government in that, for that matter as well, and think about healthcare services, education services, etc., yeah, you really start looking at, um, at uh, systems as security, privacy, and you know, very few organizations at this point in time are happy to store that information in the cloud and no longer in, uh, in their own premises or under their own control even in situations whereby it can be proven that uh, storing a cloud computing application is more secure to do it externally than internally, even in situations like that, enterprises will be very reluctant to do that because of the, um, uh, the perception, at least, yeah, that they are losing control over the applications that they operate within their organizations. The other thing is, as you can read on the top, is that uh, in, before you can start making savings, before you actually can profit from a cloud computing application, you have to make investments in cloud computing. So there are upfront costs that you have to make before you start making savings. And still a lot of companies have problems with that 
uh, because you know they don't want to have the extra expense now, particularly in economic uncertain times as um, as we are are living now. So there are a couple of issues there uh, that are um, um, that are uh, presenting a problem. Another problem is that in order to have the reliability of cloud computing, you do need good infrastructure. Uh, you do need basically fiber infrastructure. And cloud computing is not just limited to the people within the building that might be linked to a fiber optic link, but this is linked to people who would telework from home, will be linked to suppliers, will even be linked to your customers. So you really are, uh, are looking at the total network to be safe enough, reliable enough, secure enough before you actually start um, unleashing cloud computing applications out there in the market. So there are these issues that are still need to be solved and that's the issues why I believe that cloud computing in the enterprise world will still take quite a few years to really see that mature and develop into that area. Standardization of course is still an issue, there's still squabbling uh, taking place amongst the, uh, 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 the operators, uh, you know, the security companies that are involved uh, need to actually make sure that they need to be on, on what sort of platform are they going to develop their security systems. All of that is, is, is sub subduing the sort of growth on the enterprise side of uh, cloud computing. Once again, this is totally different from Google and Facebook. If you've got one billion customers, like Facebook, you do everything yourself. You know, you're not waiting for anybody else to, uh, to do whatever you have to do. And, and obviously, in a situation like that, security and privacy is different, yeah? I'm not saying less, but I'm saying different than if you operate in an, uh, in an um, environment, uh, uh, ent enterprise environment. The other thing, of course, is what's happening with cloud computing, very similar to other developments in our digital economy, is that uh, you get um, uh, companies coming from outside the industry that are going to be the leaders. So while you as an enterprise might think, I'm, uh, I want to be careful, I have to be, um, you know, make sure secure standards, etc., etc. Yeah. at the same time, cloud computing offers you new business opportunities. You can open up new markets, you can move into new areas. You can be more competitive with your prices if you start using cloud computing. So on one side, you can actually say, yes, in order to be more secure, etc., 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 you know, I, I would like to have a little bit more time. The question on the other side is, will the market let you make that sort of decisions, yeah? And are you going to see that others you know, who take the risk and are moving into cloud computing faster are actually going to grab some of the market share away from the companies that are more uh, risk adverse and, uh, you know, are, are worried about, you know, the upfront investments to be made, etc. So always this sort of an environment, as we all know, we saw that in the telecommunications industry, in the music industry, in the publishing industry, in the broadcasting industry, when you have divested uh, incumbent sort of companies being reluctant to move forward faster, there is the opportunity for new companies to come in and actually start uh, opening up markets, new markets, new applications and things like that. So there is the dynamics in the market of when are you going to move, when are you going to take a risk and increasingly as you saw the example that I just mentioned with Telstra on Facebook that I think what you will see is that uh, enterprises, government will start looking at applications that they can actually make available in the cloud before going all the way with everything into the cloud. So it will be a transition from the current situation into a situation of cloud computing over the top applications and things like that, rather than a massive change from one side uh, to the other. So it's an, it's an evolution rather than a revolution. Obviously, you know, companies like IBM, Microsoft, Apple, are, uh, are there, but equally, 
you know, you will see that um, companies like Google already operate in that area and others uh, like Facebook who already operate very large um, uh, operations like that can easily add other commercial applications to it. Telstra in Australia is one of the leaders. They were an early mover. They made an $800 million investment in cloud computing. So they're very serious about that. And they in particular, for example, are looking at healthcare. So here you will start seeing that they are building a cloud that will have that high level of security that will be necessary for e-health applications. That are the sort of things that I expect from companies such as Telstra, where you see that your existing markets is going to be cannibalized, as we mentioned before, with services that are going to be provided by others over the top. At the same time, Telstra is opening, opening up a whole new market for themselves by starting to build their own cloud and in particular, once again, uh, by, by choosing, for example, healthcare as one of their targets, they clearly also indicate that they're going to be high level of security, high level of privacy, high level of reliability uh, in that situation as well. And that, I think, will give us a good example of what the future will look like in uh, cloud computing other than what we see happening in Facebook and Google and, um, and things like that. So definitely, it's, uh, it's, it's only the beginning what we are seeing happening with cloud computing. We're only scratching the surface and we will start seeing massive new applications and business opportunities for companies moving into, uh, into that direction. So before I close, um, I would like to um, ask you if there are any questions. And so far we haven't had one section where there were no questions, so I hope you will not uh, disappoint me. Uh, and um, ask a question uh, or challenge me on one, some of the things that I've, uh, I've mentioned um, or about you know, the broader issue of the NBN, fiber, mobile, whatever um, you would like to know. Thank you. So is this available on a per personal basis? Like, say there is, uh, or even a small company Let's say they want to try out something before investing in you know, huge infrastructure or something. But uh, they would like to even have applications, you know. Like, is it possible in cloud or is it as only a, the as hardware? As private persons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the private, you know, cloud computing for um, small businesses and, 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 and even individuals is possible. If you go now to uh, the, the uh, Google Cloud, yeah, and uh, I think uh, Apple Cloud exactly the same, yeah? Where you start seeing that um, uh, um, individual people and small businesses can actually hire a bit of cloud, yeah? And, and become involved in that. And you see already actually quite a few of my colleagues in America are setting up little networks where they are using cloud computing themselves, yeah? In, uh, in that sort of private, private environments. So again, I think we are scratching the surface, yeah? Of what's happening there. But another big market is going to be opened up. Uh, you already see that a little bit with people have their photo albums in the cloud, you know, have their videos in the cloud, you know, are building their private sort of sections in the cloud. One of the elements that is worrying people there is once you start using a cloud from say, let's say uh, uh, Facebook or, or Google, is then suddenly all my information becoming available to Google for their commercial use, yeah? So the privacy issues there are still not really so sorted out, yeah? And most people would like to be uh, quite uh, certain about what's happening with their private information if they put their private pictures or their private documents and all of that uh, in the cloud, yeah? Is that then also available to, uh, to these operators uh, and, and what's the security involved in that? So there's still a bit of a discussion. It is available, but again, there is some uh, we need to sort out some of the elements there. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to know that, uh, you know, when you talk about cloud computing, uh, so there's, uh, you get five gig from, say, Apple Cloud now, but that's more to store information on your devices back to the, you know, the cloud service that Apple's provided. But when you're actually talking about cloud computing, well, is there a differentiation as to the applications running uh, in the cloud and you've got a thin client uh, running on your devices. So could you just elaborate on that, please? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, what you, once you, once you are, let's say, store in the cloud, as you said, yeah, 
at that point in time, you can applications within the cloud, yeah, typically Google, Microsoft, Apple, etc., yeah, can be used to then work with your application, yeah, in the cloud. So you can then have um, software applications managing that information, um, checking of that, you know, checking internationally or nationally similar services, uh, you know, things like that. So what you see is once you have your information stored, let's say family history, family history stored in your cloud, you could then actually have another application, family history ap application, that actually then start looking into your content and start seeing if it can match other family history information anywhere else in the world. Yeah? So that's where you can start seeing that these sort of applications are more than just storing. Yeah? It becomes an, um, an, an, an um, processing, analyzing facilities are adding to it. Now, I think what you will, it's horses for courses. Some applications or some people just simply want to store. Other, uh, other persons want to really get out in the world and do things like that. Uh, so I think it will, in the end, it will be a combination of, um, of these elements. And again, we are only at the start of it, you know. So within open system, you will again get the, the software developers, you know, coming up with all sorts of interesting applications we haven't thought of, uh, you know, at this point in time. So I think the future is still very, very much open in that respect. But both are possible on a personal level, business level, as well, obviously, as on a corporate level. Uh, in the big in, in the big sort of things, but that's um, that's it's still very very early days. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. One more question. With with all of these uh, different cloud platforms emerging, uh, the Apple's, the Google's, uh, in the future, how do you th how do you see that uh, uh, transpiring? Where you have multiple not necessarily uh, friendly uh, cloud platforms and then being able to move information to and from all of these different platforms? Still a big issue. Um, you know, the likely scenario could be that there are two platforms, the Apple platform and the open Android platform. Yeah. So that sort of, that sort of a development um, that uh, with every I, IT development, yeah, in the beginning, you see this fight between standards, yeah, who is going to be the winner. So that's why you see a lot of cloud computing people talking up their business, because what they want to do is they want to become the biggest so that their standard, yeah, becomes the most important standard and therefore have the most chance of becoming a global standard. So I think in the end you will end up with one or two, perhaps three standards. The best hope for us users is that there will be some interoperability yeah, between them. So far, Apple has, not never, has never proven to be really open for that. They want to be more of an exclusive sort of operator in that area, charge a premium price yeah, for that sort of special service that, that they offer. So you could see, perhaps, I don't know, but you, know, you could envisage that there could be a, 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 um, a standard technology linked to the more secure system, healthcare, banking, and things like that. Yeah? So where you have higher level of security, different sort of standards, but where on certain levels there will be this interoperability. Yeah? I doubt it very much if we will see, in any case, not in the short term, one standard moving. Our best hope is to get interoperability, yeah? on particular levels yeah, in the cloud, not for everything, on particular levels in the cloud, uh, and, and uh, particularly applications uh, on a private or a small business level, yeah, these are typically have less, need less security than, for example, a healthcare application or a finance application, and therefore you can have a little bit more flexibility on that level of interoperability on, uh, on that level. But, I think it will follow very much along other developments in the ICT industry where you get the posturing uh, of companies, you know, we are the best, we will be the standard. Then, you know, you get merger and acquisitions and you form larger, larger groups, etc. But having said that, uh, the early movement of companies such as Google and Apple into, um, into the cloud, yeah, uh, they definitely are going to, um, uh, you know, they are already so big, yeah 
that uh, they, will, uh, they will form part of the future. They're not going to, to disappear uh, easily. So that's why I'm started to say a Google open network sort of application and a Apple more premium service application is what we are seeing happening um, at this point in time. But unable to predict the future beyond that. Okay, thank you very much.